Would you guys got another video? Do you make these stupid PC mistakes? If you go on YouTube, you're going to see a ton of videos out there claiming to do all sorts of things. And a lot of this is just clickbait. And a lot of it is just lies. And people fall for it all the time. And they end up breaking their system and end up coming onto my Discord server asking for help. And most of them have tweaked their PC or done something to their PC. So I'm going to go through some of the big mistakes that people make and some of the myths that people believe when it comes to technology. So let's go through the first one, and that is the process count. A lot of people put a lot of emphasis on this process count that you get in Task Manager here. They will open up Task Manager, and of course they will go straight into the information part, which shows all the processes here and the memory. So down here, you're going to see processes 162 which is quite a lot. Sometimes this can get up into the 200s. And a lot of people will talk about how this is crippling your PC and how you can use certain tools, say like Chris Titus Text Tool, to lower this count to make your PC much faster. And I can tell you right now, I've had this as low as 60 and as high as 200 odd, and I've never seen any difference between the two. But there is people out there that will believe a lot of this stuff and they will go ahead and download a tool like the Ultimate Windows Utility, which is nothing wrong with it. It's a tweaking tool that will save you a lot of time for turning off certain settings, but it's not going to make a massive change to your PC performance or even give you massive FPS. It just won't. And if you want me to show you a stock Windows installation where we can do some benchmarking and I'll do a benchmark after we run this tool or other tools, then let me know in the comment section below and I'll make that video for you. You're not going to see a huge, massive difference when you run things like this. And that could be said for any script or any other application that you may run on your computer. You may see the process count drop like we do here. And again, a lot of these performance boosts are just marginal. They're so small. Uh, but what they do is literally turn off a lot of features or hide a lot of features inside Windows when you run them whether you're doing them inside group policy editor or you're running some sort of script, all it's going to do is turn off this feature in group policy, in a policy. It won't really sort of make a huge impact on performance gains on your system. So let me just show you right here. This is my main system right here. Inside my privacy and security, you'll see a lot of the areas here are turned off by group policies. They are not making a huge difference to my system in performance wise, but what it is doing is it just means that I'm not interested in any of these features in Windows and I turn them off. And then the grayed out section here, which will uh, basically stop you turning it back on. So it's hiding that feature. It's not doing no more than that. You're just toggling it off and the policy is literally just hiding the feature. And the same thing can be said for any of these registry hacks or tweaks that you're going to see. And I've showed you these on my channel. These will disable your locational tracking, your feedback, your Cortana, all, all the advertising that Microsoft puts onto you, and other settings like this that people uh, get paranoid about, and also things to do with telemetry. But you'll never really 100% stop it, and it really doesn't make a huge amount of difference to performance and gaming FPS like other people claim. But it is really based upon privacy, really. And a lot of the services that you're turning off are really sort of set to manual anyway. Now, another thing I see people talking about is Windows Defender, how they want to remove it from their computer because it, is, it uses up a lot of system resources. And really, that you're answering your own question. If your PC is struggling because you have Windows Defender on there, then it must be really old and it may be time to upgrade your hardware. But removing things like Windows Defender is only going to either break your system and make it unstable or make you vulnerable to viruses, malware, ransomware and other things. Now, I'm talking about the people that don't have any antivirus software at all. They remove Windows Defender like I've showed you before, and they also have no third-party antivirus program. They remove all smart screen and all this stuff because they say it takes up too many system resources, and they want it for just gaming. But really, you are leaving yourself vulnerable by doing that because you're going to have no protection whatsoever, and it doesn't matter how clued up you are, you are going to end up getting infected at some point. Uh, whether it'll be from some site that has been 
you know, compromised or whether you click on something, you won't know because you haven't got any sort of uh, first line of defense, which is some sort of antivirus program. You need some sort of defense. You can't completely remove everything and thinking that you'll never get infected because you won't even know you're infected because you won't have any sort of detection there. I've seen people ripping out the firewall, ripping out all the window security just like this, and they don't even install any other third-party antivirus. It just makes no sense. They are completely delusional. And all to boost FPS and PC performance. It's complete nonsense. These people are complete idiots, and they are misleading you and making you vulnerable to some nasty stuff out there on the internet. And you get some joker in the comments section that will say, I've not had an antivirus for 20 years and I've never been infected. How would you know? You wouldn't know because you don't have any, any sort of antivirus to detect it. You know, but of course, these people are just special people. They know exactly what they're doing and they know more than everyone else. But it's just ridiculous. So you can see there's no process here running because we've completely removed it and it's not advisable and it can break your system. So be very, very careful if you're following some guide on to do this, I always recommend that you have some sort of protection and I always recommend that you don't remove Windows Defender and leave it on there because when you install an antivirus program, it will literally disable uh, Windows Defender. You don't need to remove it and also you can set it as periodic scanning as a secondary line of defense uh, and that's what I'd advise you to do rather than remove it. Now, another silly myth that people believe in is that Windows 7 is still safe to use in 2024. And you're going to get a little cult of people on the internet talking about how they're still rocking uh, Windows 7 in 2024 and how it's still the best operating system and, and things like that. And you're just not getting security updates for it anymore. It's full of holes. They are not being patched. And if you see how many patches are being released for Windows 11, then you can imagine that how bad Windows 7 is because it's not getting any sort of patches at all, any security releases at all. So all the software is outdated as well. So I don't understand why they would want to use something like this and they think it's some sort of conspiracy. Microsoft are trying to mislead you by telling you not to use it because it's not safe and they're telling you that it is safe and it's safe to use. But they're thinking about themselves. They're not thinking about the mass majority of people out there that use a computer. If you're not clued up enough and you're using it for banking or using it as your main daily system, which does all your banking and all your other transactions online, then you're foolish. You're going to end up becoming a victim to cybercrime because it is not good enough to use in 2024 and it's not receiving any form of updates whatsoever. And the people that are telling people online that it's perfectly safe to use are clueless. They really are. They have no clue about security and they're living in some sort of bubble. I don't know what they're doing, but they are still using this today and they've got some old computer laying around and they want to continue to use it. It's just not good enough anymore and you have to move on. Now, another one the Linux fanboys will like to tell you is Linux makes the computer faster. It doesn't actually make the computer faster the speed of the computer's hardware is governed only by its hardware. So replacing the operating system with Linux doesn't make the computer actually faster. That being said, Linux does use uh, fewer hardware resources, uh, CPU cycles and RAM and stuff like that. It uses less and it will make it a little bit more responsive, but it doesn't actually physically make it faster because you're not actually changing the hardware of that computer. You're just changing the software, which is the operating system. And it really does make me laugh when I see people that use Linux use that term, make your computer faster and all this sort of nonsense, because they don't know what they're talking about. You can't make a computer faster by changing the operating system. If you did a video edit with that same computer, it will take the same amount of time because it still has the same processing power, the same memory in there, and all the other hardware is exactly the same. The only thing that's changed is the software. But you can see how quickly things open, and that's due to the way Linux works. You get fewer system resources when you're using Linux, and it will give you that feel that the PC is actually faster when all you're doing is really at lightening up the load on that computer and making it more responsive. But I'm sure someone will argue the case in the comments section below and say I'm wrong, but 
you know, you can't change what hardware is in that computer. It's just simply, you know, a Core 2 Duo is still going to be a Core 2 Duo. Anyway, let's move on to the next and last final one, which is the myth that Linux doesn't get infected. All operating systems can be infected, whether it be Mac OS, whether it be Android, whether it be Linux, whether it be Windows, they can all get infected. Linux is not immune to being infected. A lot of people think that is the case, but it's not. Now, Linux is less likely to be attacked with malware because obviously uh, there's not so many people that use Linux and the people that create malware are going after the bigger audience, which is Windows. But I'm pretty sure that if roles were reversed and Linux was in replace of Windows, you would probably see uh, ways of infecting Linux way more than what you're seeing today. But we'll never know that because Linux is never going to replace Windows. Now, Windows 11 is definitely uh, much more secure than what it was back when it was Windows 7, Windows uh, XP and Windows Vista. The security settings are a lot more strict and they will block a lot of stuff. So it's a lot more harder to infect Windows 11 than what it was on older operating systems. But anyway, I think that is going to be about it for this video. So if you are one of these people that are believing in all of this stupidness on the internet, then, uh, you know, start changing your mindset because a lot of it is just misinformation or myths and placebo. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope you enjoy the weather and I shall catch you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.